at AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. So, Catherine, two years on, um, you were, I think, our second guest on XY Live, one of the most popular, popular ones that we've had, talking about integrating professional coaching and uh, into financial advice business. Mm -hmm. At that time, your business was two months old, three months old? Yeah, I probably had two or three clients, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're, now we're two, two, two years. Two years. Okay. Almost two years to the day, I think, since we did that interview. Yeah. Yeah. So what's changed? What's changed? Well, obviously, I've got a few more clients. <laughs> more than two. That's yeah. A good thing. Paying myself a salary, have staff. Yeah. And I think my business model is hasn't changed yet, but I'm going to spend a bit of time in January just kind of thinking about how my service model changes a bit. To me, yeah. what my sticky clients need. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, interesting to hear sort of how things have changed. So, so maybe like so because your your business is very hands on but maybe you could just explain how the how the approach works and the yeah. sort of life. well obviously everyone that watches this won't have watched my first the interview. diehards the diehards, the diehards maybe Cheers, John. um so i my target market is female divorcees or or women who have experienced job loss um the death of a partner Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. So they want someone to be that person that sits beside them on the couch, um, that they can bounce ideas off and mm -hmm. helps them manage their money too. Um, so that's my business. That's 12 Wealth. The majority of my clients are that. That's who I talk to. Um, but I have a number of other clients who are husband and wife, happily married, no plans for divorce, <laughs> um, who are also wealth accumulators. Um, and they've mainly been referrals from my other clients. Uh-huh. Okay. And so you, you talk about like you want you, you're thinking about repositioning some of your service mm -hmm. to your sticky clients. What is that? What's driving that and what does it look like? Yeah. So I, I reckon about 12 months in, I started thinking about who my best referral partners were. Like in the first 12 months, I think because you talk about going into business for so long, you've got kind of a pipeline of clients who have said they'll come to you and you yeah. don't need referral partners yeah in the next 12 months i really started trying to think about who my best referral partners were it's just the hairdresser <laughs> yeah it was no longer just the hairdresser she ran out of people to refer <laughs> um and um the gp stopped referring to so i've got a number of referral really good referral relationships with divorce lawyers uh -huh. and i've kind of they're great referrers of yep. people but what i've kind of established is a lot of the time their clients come and see me, get some advice, and then they'll say, yeah, really keen, but probably don't need you for 12 months when I get my settlement. And so I kind of, what I've decided is that, one, I want to get myself skilled up as a um, collaborative financial advisor and get a qualification to do that. What does that mean? I'll tell you that in a sec. Okay. And the second is that I want to start charging for those initial meetings, especially when they're referred by lawyers that they're paying oh, an hourly yeah. rate to. Um, yeah. So that's a bit of a business model change. Uh -huh. um, and the third is I've been doing a lot of workshops that I get paid to do, yeah. but I haven't really been marketing that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great source of income for me, but it also allows me to provide scaled general advice. So to help people without all of the compliance. Yeah. So I think I want to do more of that. So that's okay. Yeah, the and, changes. And what's the objective behind that? Obviously, the workshops is is additional sort of marketing. You know, I thought it, it's partly marketing, but I'm really not trying to win clients out of that. The objective is yeah. to provide women with financial confidence to engage in their financial affairs. And if I get clients uh -huh. from it, that's great. But if I'm being remunerated well to do it, the client, you know, you can help people. Yeah. At scale. Yeah. Without then needing to take a fee from them. Yeah, sure. Coming along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's this collaborative advice? About? So there's a process. Um, there's a group of people that call themselves collaborative practitioners uh -huh. and collaborative practitioners help people to have good divorces. So uh -huh. um, typically in a collaborative process, you have two collaborative divorce lawyers and they actually have a commitment not to go to court. So that's a really different okay. process. Yeah. And then you have um, a mediator. 
and yeah. you also have a financial coach. Right. And in a process like that, the what, what happens is husband and wife sit down together with their lawyers yeah. um, and a mediator and a financial advisor. Oh, okay. And that financial advisor works with them to be running cash flows and working everything out as they go rather yeah. than operating in a bit of a black hole. Right, okay. Um, so that would be a movement more towards fee for providing a service to some collaborative professionals yep. and then potentially becoming a financial advisor for one of those parties on a long-term basis. Okay. And is that, so is it more just out of interest or is that an acquisition strategy? No, it's not an acquisition. Uh, it's an acquisition strategy because you get clients. <laughs> so if that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, yes, it's an acquisition strategy. No, it's a better, it allows me to provide a better service for the uh, referral partners that are referring work to me yeah. and to be rewarded for the service that I'm providing as I go along instead of when they come to me in 12 months time. Yeah. Okay. Right? So it's a way of being yeah. remunerated engaged. to provide a service yeah. and engaged yeah. Yeah. at the front end rather than once a decision's been made. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And what you mentioned that you wanted to, to change things, sorry, um, but for to be more tailored to your sticky clients? Yeah. So I found that my sticky clients are really appreciate the um, emotional bit of, that I provide. So I think I said in our initial meeting, because it was a real match for me, is what's the logical value and what's the emotional value? Mm -hmm. And the logical value is what a lot of what financial advisors do. Yeah. You know, it's what yeah. we think we get paid for. Yeah. Um, but often after a year or two, you realise people don't want to pay you for that anymore because they feel like you've done the practical work. Yes. The clients that stick around really appreciate that emotional value bit and that's the coaching yeah. bit and being able to call you up and say, I'm thinking about taking a new job, you know. Yeah. And they're not just wanting to talk about the salary. Yeah. They're thinking about how it affects their long-term goals and you know, how they negotiate the salary package or how they get an extra three days to leave a year or, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I also have some interesting conversations like that with clients and feel like I'm sort of like almost a careers counsellor. Right. Sometimes. Yeah, and do you think there's... reassurance or something. That's right. But you're because you're their wise counsel, do, that, do you think they're stickier? Do you find those clients to be stickier? Yeah, I find that when... Yeah, I, I think, and we've had this conversation mm. before, but... I've found that with, with that sort of work, people people feel like they should have their finances sorted, mm. right? Mm. People, so they think that they should do it. So they sometimes they, they push through the inaction barrier and actually, you know, get things started. Mm. But you have to be committed to make it happen. Mm. It's not always easy. You have to, mm. you know, it's all balancing. It's which mm. levers you pull. You have to make some sacrifices, mm. right? So I find some people say that they want to do it. Mm but then they don't take the action that, that yeah. re represents that. And yeah. we've had this conversation that we're going to talk about, um, about, about like loot about clients that leave your service. Mm. Uh, but they're the ones that typically leave because they're, they're not getting the results. At the end of the day, we want to give people, like you say, the, 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 the um, tangible mm. sort of like the numbers value and then mm. the, the emotional value. Mm. But if you're not engaging that you end up getting the shits, mm. They, There's no emotional yeah, value. There's no, no logical they're, value. And they're not getting the financial yeah. results. So, yeah. Yeah. so people leave. And I know we had that conversation. I was going to talk about it a bit later, but we had that conversation at the start. And I feel like in terms of when you started the business, what did you think your exit rate was going to be for clients? Do you know, it's funny that I, I, I you always, your ideology is not to lose clients, right? I remember asking my financial advisor, um, who is a fee-for-service advisor, uh, who's been in business a number of years more than we have, what his what I should assume in terms of attrition when I was doing my original business plan, and he said twenty percent, and I was like, no, one in five, <laughs> yeah, no way, and yeah. I certainly haven't lost one in five, but I've only been in business a few years, mm. but it's not one in it's not one in twenty that you lose, like it's yeah. it's been more than I thought it would be. But in most cases, I've, it's sort of been okay. You yeah. know, the people that leave have kind of been frustrating because they haven't I've done the There's doing. been, a, there, yeah, yeah, there hasn't yeah. been any congruence. It kind of feels like there's always a bit of friction. 
yeah. because they're not doing what they need to exactly. do. Yeah. You feel like I feel like I'm doing a whole lot of work and not getting any outcomes. So that's yeah. really unsatisfying. And you're yeah, that's right. The, the stuff that they need to do. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's really it's unsatisfying for us, but I'm sure it's even more unsatisfying for Yang and yeah. Karen, who are doing all of the, the chasing. chasing and admin and yeah, getting yeah. frustrated and yeah. feeling like they're not doing their job well. Yeah, and it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I remember having a conversation with uh, with my mentor Dean. Shout out Dean. <laughs> um, at the start, and he was saying like, we well, were doing some some sort of numbers, and he said what's the exit rate and i was like oh this service is so yeah. gonna be so awesome like people are gonna believe yeah. because they're just they're gonna love yeah. it yeah. They're, they'll build all these things so yeah. that it's awesome you know we're gonna help them but people when they don't like you say they don't engage mm. they don't get the results they mm. don't get the emotional benefits and mm. then it's a, and then they sort of almost have to leave mm. if, they're, if they're not doing the work and you, sometimes mm. i've had a couple where i've had to tell them like there's no point yes yeah, you're paying the yeah. fee yeah. When you're not getting any benefit, you may as well just not pay the fee mm. and get some more money. <laughs> Waste almost. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. What did you assume is your number up front? Zero. Wow. What do you assume now? Well, I think I actually built something into the model uh, to uh, to just to just to because I was told to. But um, yeah, I, I I didn't think that anybody would because I, I think in the past I've worked in businesses and when people were. Well, the first business I worked in was more had an investment management mm. arm, so they could still continue to add value yeah. there, even if people weren't doing the doing on the financial side. And then the last business I worked in is probably a little bit lower engagement, mm. lower service level. So they're happy to just let those things sort mm. of bubble away in the background. But mm. if you're paying, you know, five thousand dollars a year for mm. your for your ongoing advice, you need to be getting something out of it. Mm. Sort of like that's bad for the advisor to keep doing mm. that. Obviously, you can't do the fee for no service mm. bit as well. But now I think we uh, probably, maybe, normally it happens at the start. Like it will mm. happen, someone someone will come on, I say it's an expectation to take ongoing service because mm. otherwise you may as well not spend the mm. money on the plan to begin with. I agree, I won't do a plan without ongoing service. Yeah. Yeah, it's like too um, hard. Yeah, yeah, but it's normally They're around. Not satisfying. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I push for the same thing, mm. and um, yeah, it's about that sort of six month mark mm. where it's too hard. They're not sticking in a mm. budget. It's not working. They're not mm. getting the results, and then mm. we have a chat, and then oftentimes they'll they'll mm. sort of exit mm. after that. And we probably have probably be under ten percent. Mm. Maybe we got a small yes, business. Yeah, anyway. yeah. It's, it's yeah. I mean, I've got a few that now that I'm two years in. I've had maybe 10% of my clients go from quarterly advice meetings to annual. Yeah. So that's, I didn't kind of foresee that, which is crazy. Yeah. You know, they're kind of all done and it's actually a win to keep them. A review client and I charge less for that. So that's yeah. a form of attrition. Yeah. Because, yeah. You, you know, you have your revenue on those clients you know, around, depending on the circumstance. Yeah. So that's a form of attrition. Yeah. So if I added that to the people that leave, then it's 20%, I reckon, because I reckon yeah. I'm about the same. Yeah. 10% have left and 10% have gone annual. And how do you find it when, when people drop their service level, like, like if they go from a quarterly review to an annual review in terms of, obviously they're not getting the same support, but are they getting, like, are they, do you find... Because I, from my experience, people don't tend to not stick to the plan. So, like, if you set an annual plan for someone, do mm. they then do it? Is that a is that a viable option? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the clients that have become annual review clients, um, I re have really kind of financially they're kind of sticking to the plan yeah. or there's been a major change in their life. Yeah. So it could be that they've gone from working for a big corporate and earning a salary to starting their own business, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't think they're going to be as good at sticking to their plan, mm. but they, you know, they think they will be. So let's just wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> let's wait. I went the other way yeah. with our clients. So when I started the business, it yeah. was, it was annual with a, like a, a six month, no, six month check in and then a quarterly phone mm. call. And I found that just nobody was sticking to their plan. Mm. I was doing these things and everyone was off track. So then mm. I just condensed it more and more. And now I do monthly phone calls. Wow. Make sure that they do that. Increase your account for that? Yeah. Well, yes. 
Yes, yeah. but it's almost it's like an always clients. I actually had this same conversation mm. with a with a client uh, just this just mm. today, just earlier, and she said, "Oh well, um, we because we sort of changed our fees to reduce the mm. asset based fees and to move mm. to fixed dollar only." And she was actually she separated from a partner, and they were both staying clients. But I said, "You know, we're gonna have to put your fees up now because mm. we're dealing with you individually, and plus we've had these changes." And she said, "Well, I can do a two monthly. Mm. I could do it every two months." And I mm. said to her, "Well, one." I know that you're more likely to get the results if we do, if we do mm. it in a two month um, monthly instead a month, of, monthly yep. instead of two monthly, which is mm. going to be better for you longer term, but also better for us because we know that it's actually working. Mm. And two, it actually takes longer to get your head back into it mm. every two months, where it's almost easier to continue to deliver that mm. service if you're doing it every month mm. because I know exactly what's happening. I only spoke to them, you know, four or five weeks mm. ago. Mm. So I don't have to do the prep work. No, I, I totally know. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I find doing quarterly reviews, it takes me an hour to prepare for the quarterly review. Yeah. Um, takes me an hour afterwards yeah. to, you know, do the yeah, notes, yeah. yeah. you know, put it all in the, put all the tasks in, mm. you know, so it's three hours of work. If I did that monthly, it, it would take me. The same, you probably spent the hour in the first month, yeah. the hour of prep yeah. in the second month, and then you do the review and yeah, yeah, same. similar. So, yeah, I think you're right. So, yeah, so it's sort of you know, and then it makes it so much easier to do the, the annual planning because mm. you know that oh, you know exactly where they're at, you've got your head in the client, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what is your so you talk about you know, you want them that you're the person that sits on the couch with them, what does that look like from an advice perspective? Um, it means that I, do you mean from an advice perspective? Or, yeah, or about from the like process a, and like this, I suppose the types of advice that you give and then yeah. how that's delivered and yeah. then yeah, the process. Yeah. So probably like anybody else, I do that initial meeting. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it's all about goals. So I'm a goals based advisor, yeah. like a lot of people that are X, Y advisor. Yeah. Um, it's very holistic. So it starts with cash flow, finishes with estate planning. So that's the advice stuff. Yeah. So my first three months, it's all pretty much the same as everybody else. You know, in terms of my, what I'm getting paid for, it's fact find, what are your goals? How are we going to get you there? Yeah. So I meet the clients three months later, I do a strategy session and run through the strategy. That's not an SOA strategy. Yeah. It's just big picture. Yeah. We've had all this backwards and forwards. Yeah. Here's what I think life looks like. Um, and mm -hmm. if it's a divorcee, it might be, you know, it's all the typical stuff. Mm. You know, where's your money, where are you getting money from? Where's it going? Yeah. Can you afford a house? Can you not? Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and what happens in the, in the three months in the middle? You're doing back plans and stuff? Um, oh, like a whole raft of stuff. You know, it's all the, I think it's, um, gathering information, formulating strategy, talking to them. You know, it's pretty heavy going that first three months, yeah. you know, running scenarios, kind of coming up with a long-term plan. Yeah. So I don't try and do that in two weeks in an SOA. Yeah, yeah. It's really, you uh -huh. know, I might be getting insurance quotes. Yeah. You know, it's kind of all the work you do for a massive SOA, but without doing the SOA. So all the research, yeah. basically. Yeah. And um, do you mean? with the clients through that three month period or no i try not to meet with them face to face i just have a chat okay okay you know or karen yeah yeah is doing leg work yeah it's all the kind of standard i don't do a big fact find up front where the client fills it in yeah i don't do that so we're gathering information mm -hmm. um and then creating our own fact find so they engage and start paying yep on day one and then you book in a three month thing yeah do the work in the background yeah present the strategy okay. after three months yeah and then we'll decide in that strategy meeting what we want to work on first. Mm. So de depending, it might just be cash flow, in which case we don't do an SOA for however long. Yeah. Or it might be that they say, shit, I really need insurance. So then the first three months we'll do insurance. Uh -huh. And then yeah. three months done. So then we'll be meeting three months later. Then yeah. we might decide we want to work on investments. Okay. So we don't try and do, we try and space it out. And so you just attack one thing at a time. So you don't yeah. do, you don't do an SOA that covers insurance and super and no. estate assets. No, no, no. I just try and I used to, that's a changing process. Yeah. Um, I found that it was too much for people to digest. Yeah. I found that as a small business, it was a lot for me to digest, to try and get it all done. Yeah. Um, and I found that clients couldn't get their head around doing it all at once. And so they just yeah. wouldn't do anything. So yeah. instead, if I, broke it down. It also helps to provide the 
logical value over a longer period of time yeah. than if I did it all up front. Sure. So yeah. It, yeah. I find it's, it's a bit of a tricky one really with that mm. because I think that you sort of want, people want, so like I know a lot of the people I work with, they want a plan, like they want to get clear on sort of everything where if you go through the steps, it might take longer to get to, get to yeah, the, the result. But I don't. I had the same thing that it is. Obviously, it's a lot. Like when I do some stuff, mm. and sometimes it, you know, because you front it, end it, don't jump. you? You you typically yeah. try and yeah, we try to put get it all put, done. Put all the plan together. Yeah. Once, but yeah, this is why we do strategy sessions with people mm. that can be like I did one that was four and a half hours because mm. you do you're talking about the modeling and the broader mm. overall yeah, strategy right. than the banking and mm. the, and the budgeting cash mm. flow personal investments, mm. if they've got employee share, got a few oh, yeah. guys with employee share purchase plans, mm. all of that, the tax, buying mm. property. Yeah, it's a lot, right? Personal insurance, yeah. like, yeah, it can, be, it can be overwhelming, but it's hard, yeah. I think, then, I suppose if you if you created it in a service, and it's quite a, an interesting way to, to do it, just one block at a time. So what I would say is the strategy session up front is kind of that. It's what you're talking about, Yeah. except that we've already, we're presenting it in a strategy paper. Yeah. So, that work has been done by me. So I know what the plan is for the next 12 months. Yeah. And so do they. Yeah, yeah. But the implementation is done over an extended period. Does I that see. make sense? Yes. So they make the decision. The first thing I want you to focus on is my insurance. Uh-huh. The next thing I want you to focus on is. And do you ever have people say, I want two things? Oh, yeah, in which case we do two things. Like it's not. Okay. You know, well, it kind of depends what they are. Like if someone's. Yeah. Sometimes super and insurance are intertwined, right? Yeah. So you've got to do what's compliance, what's right, and practically what's right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't try and do it all at once because one, my business can't digest it, and two, they can't digest digest it. Uh huh. And did, you said that you, that's a change from what you were doing up front. Before? I did the big SOAs yeah. instead of the strategy documents, uh -huh. and I found that by the time we got around to implementing stuff, I was there was. It was just completely different to what the SOA said. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just a big waste of time. Right. And money, really, because time is money. Things so, do change. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's how I do it now. And I yeah. think I had the idea from listening to, maybe it was Leah yeah. Skidell on yeah. XY Bus. She yeah, said yeah. that she broke them down yeah. and did them as small. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Leah does it. She, she, she does one thing at a time and then she's yeah. got a coach. She's even got a coaching only service where she tells people like, helps people understand their options and what they can do and then they go, and, do, it go and do it as well. But I know that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that at least it, it was the last time we spoke that mm. the ongoing piece was was more just tackling issues yeah. as they go. And, and, I, and I suppose it's been partly dependent on your demographic yeah. that you're working with as well. Yeah. Like working with Gen Ys, they're a bit impatient. Mm. They want to get <laughs> stuff done. You yeah. know, working with the, with the, the, the older um, demographic more yeah it, yeah it most of my kids have got most of my kids most of my <laughs> clients have got a number of kids and working full time and yeah i just find they can't digest it sure so in terms of the actual advice process mm. itself so you so you have an initial meeting yep. how does that work so you have an initial meeting with the client mm -hmm. and then you and then you outline the cert the, what we role. what i think they need to do yeah. so based on what your goals are yeah. And based on what your circumstances are, here's my strategy for you. So it would be investment strategy. It would be retirement strategy. It would be, super, you know, super strategy or the standard advice stuff. Yeah. Um, and it would all just be linked back to what their goals were. So. Yeah. And is that before they engage you? Or that's no, after? that's after they engage me. So I'm paid engagement, initial meeting, engagement agreement. Yeah. And then we start work. We don't do any work until we get some money in the door. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Smart business. Sense. Yeah. Catherine, you've learned yeah. something in the last couple yes. of years. Yes. Uh, and then, and then you do, so you just do a quarterly check in with clients and just work through. And then an annual review. Yeah. To um, reset the strategy. Yeah. To reset the strategy and also to, well, no, that's when your FDS is. Yeah. Um, and then we'll probably do a formal, just we share a licensee obviously, and yeah. just speaking to Dean, our mentor and licensee. Yeah. He, as a licensee, he wants, you know, SOAs, full annual review SOAs every two years. So I'll, you know, that's all rolling around for me now. Uh -huh. So I'll do that. I'll do the full yep. SOA, which is really just a cut and paste of all my quarterly meetings because I yeah. document that. Well, they already that. know the strat. They already know yeah. the strategies. We do, it, we do one every year, even mm. though we don't really need to. But mm. 
Yeah. Where it's the document automation sorted. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And in many, so my quarterly meeting templates, are divide, I'd have a, a template that we run through, um, yeah. which is all about what are your goals? And then I go buy it, sort of cash flow, banking and finance, investment, super. So it's kind of an SOA layout, yeah, yeah. but in a digestible form, yeah. in a two or three page form. Cool. And, and how do you, what's your pricing model look like and how, if anything, has that changed? Change since since you set up. I think I've probably increased my fees because I don't think you understand how much compliance there is and how yeah. much it's going to cost. Yeah. To finance that. Yep. Until a few years in. Uh -huh. Um. So, and I also think in your first year you've got more friends and family, and you don't feel like you can yeah. charge them the full whack. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So your fee only, hundred yeah. percent fee only. Yeah. No asset based fees. Nothing. No insurance commissions. No. No. Just no fees except what my clients pay me. No referral arrangement, no referral fees, no commissions. So I can look my clients in the eye and say, the only money I will ever receive is what you pay me. Sure. Yeah. And from day one? From day one. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Don't you do the same? Yeah, I do the yeah. same. Well, actually, no, I cheated. I, I did have asset based fees because most of my clients got like 40 grand in their super fund mm. and I knew that that was sort of around the money, a bit mm. of laziness uh, mm. on my part and not knowing how to tackle it. But mm. now I'm transitioning all of our clients to it. And why have you decided to do that? Uh, just what was your motivation? Perceived, perceived conflict from yeah. the client side. And yeah. especially because we, you know, we had a lot of clients, they talk about buying property. I think that it's some potential issues with the property mm. market mm. at the moment been talking to a lot of people about personal like a wrap investment account mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it, nobody thought that that may have been influencing the decision, even though I've got great relationships with mm -hmm. clients, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can see the potential for, for conflict in the mm -hmm. more that obviously we yeah. manage, yeah. the more that, that they pay us. So I actually yeah. increased the fees. I just ditched the fees. So I was probably undercharging. Yeah, well, it's like what's four hundred dollars if you're charging one percent fee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's no, just it's, not worth it's it. It's not a huge amount, but we yeah. also didn't. You know, they're wrap platforms. They take mm. care of themselves pretty mm. well these mm. days. But we're passive, mm. uh, as you know. So it did, it's not a, a ton of work in the investment mm. management it's side. Not. It's more the administration, mm. but that's all wrapped into our to our other service. And so I, well, the other thing I would say is because I've opted not to use investment platforms so far, um, it, I can't charge fun fees. Yeah. Right? Like how would you yeah. do it? Take the option out. Yeah. It's like almost impossible. You'd yeah. have to try and pick a day each month that you work it out. It's just too hard. <laughs> yeah. Kind of yeah. That's why people use routes. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have to do that. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, and so do you you have uh, packages. I've got a couple of questions from Sam. You know, Sam, um, who was asking me some questions about pricing, and I said, yeah. well, we're having this chat. So uh, he was asking, do you, so do you have set packages, or do you do a, uh, you know, a quote depending on the complexity of the advice? Are there, you know, is it uh, like obviously it's structured, but uh, is it packaged? Do you know, I don't know if it's as structured as it should be. You know, and that's one of the things I've got to think about in January. Yeah. So I have a minimum fee, at which I just have to walk away if they don't want to pay it. Yeah, um, which is? Which is about five grand. Because uh -huh. um, much below that, it's, oh, that's for four meetings a year, not, yeah. not for one meeting a year. Yeah. And do um, you do an engagement fee, like an upfront fee? No, I like don't. Straight on I, I don't. I just, yeah. I used to, that's another change. Yeah. I used to charge for the initial SOA, which clients didn't value. So they felt like yeah. they were being charged for something they didn't value. Uh-huh. Um, so that was part of the reason I increased my fees. So I increased my fees yeah. and just start charging it quarterly from day one. Okay. So up front, they're paying me a minimum of $1,375. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if they're engaging me 10 grand a year, they're paying me two and a half grand a year. Uh -huh. You know, two and a half grand is the initial advice. Yeah. Yeah. Down payment. And do you find, is your work front end loaded though? Like in terms of because... It I is. It, it totally is. Yeah. yeah. So I say to clients, the minimum engagement is twelve months. Okay. Right. Um, you're not gonna. I've never legally held someone to that. Like, of course. Yeah. You, yeah, no, but no. like, you should yeah. expect to be paying me for twelve months. So I don't want you as a client if you want to walk away after six months because I have to do lots of work. Yeah. Up front, it's front ended. So I tell. Yeah. 
Okay. We have that conversation. And what about so? How does the how does insurance play in? Then, if, then if you're you know some people get insurance, some people don't get insurance. I so assume. that's all part of the scope of the work, okay. right? So, you know, if it's a couple, um, it's obvious that they're paying a lot for insurance. You know that it's got full comms in it. Yeah. Um, you can save them. Maybe. Thousands. Thousands, yeah. five thousand, six thousand dollars a year in insurance premiums. Then it's e when you're standing in that room, it's pretty easy to increase your fee <laughs> because you're about to save them five grand a year. Yeah. You know, if you're not going to charge them five grand if you're saving them five grand. So yes. I'm not saying that to them, but I'm thinking about the in overall circumstances and the oh, value yeah. I can add for them yeah. when I'm quoting on my advice fee. Uh -huh. So wealthier people are paying me more in fees than people who are not as wealthy. But part of the reason for that is they've got a family trust, more they, yeah, they're more complex, their needs. They might have three different investment vehicles. So yeah. then you've got to manage three different investment vehicles. The nature of the conversations you're having is more complex. Yes. Because they're asking you about, you know, quite yeah. often about stuff that you're going to have to do detailed research on, yeah. investigation on. You have speaking to their accountants more often, their lawyers more often. Yeah. So I, I will typically try and scope the work. But I wouldn't say that I wish I could tick a box and tell you, and I thought I'd be able to. Yeah. When I started my business, that I could say, okay, if you've got an SMSF, it starts at four. We had another four for a family trust, another four, but it's not really that. Yeah. Simple. And, and do you, like, when you scope a client and, and you say there's these things involved, I know that, yeah. So what if they, if they came back and said they wanted bits and pieces, do you allow them to do that? Or do you just say, like, do you, you get the results that it's this and then you have to sort of go with that? program obviously not yeah. to, you don't choose the outcomes but the but the elements no it's interesting you say that i've had it happen a couple of times and i quote for the work in different circumstances so when i do the engagement agreement yeah i will quote for it and say if you want me to manage your smsf in many cases i'm getting them to shut down an smsf so yeah <laughs> but if you want to keep your smsf and me to manage it i'll charge more yeah and so i just quote for depending on what their ultimate decision is, I quote for it up front. What do you do there? So I have the, I have, and this You've is Sam was asking packages about this me, thing. I yeah, I've got all, everything in, in yeah. packages mm. and I've really just got, I've got one package. I've recently mm. introduced a coaching service as well, mm. which is a, just a general information money coaching, yep. general advice. Uh, and, but yeah, that's, that's pretty new. So I, I don't really do very much of that at the moment. Mm. It's more just a package. I just mm. have one package mm. and then I have some extras on there. So, so a bit like one for singles, one for couples. Yeah. So, yeah. so we've got a fee, you know, it's, it's about $5,000 is an upfront yeah. fee for an individual. And then yeah. for a couple that works out, that's about 8,000 yeah. or thereabouts. And then yeah. the ongoing is like, you know, about 5,000 yeah. or, you know, maybe the same for, mm. for eight eight thousand ish for a couple mm. but then i'll do like insurance is 1900 mm. per person extra mm. just as an add-on mm. self-managed super funds i don't really do mm. that many of yeah. them but uh but there's that's that's more sort of a, a quote mm. but i feel if someone's already paying five thousand mm. dollars you can sort of work that in then it's just the extra work oh you can that's yeah because you've yeah. got that big upfront fee which helps you to pay for all that work up front yeah, exactly. The and there's heaps of work up mm, front. And heaps. then I, part of that, and I was charging less before, and I, I know that there's different approaches when mm. you, when you charge, but when you pay, when you, when you, you charge a lower fee at the start and then a client leaves, you end up really frustrated because, oh, yeah. because it's like, like you've, un, you've sort of uh, priced down your service and most people stay. So mm. on balance, it works out to be mm. okay. But I just never wanted to have that issue. Like I just want to make sure that my clients charge fairly that we're paid fairly for the work that we do and if someone turns around and says that they don't want to be a client anymore well of course i, I i'm sad and, and if that if i don't think that they should leave i'll tell them that mm. if i if i do like if i think well we've probably already had the conversation mm. if i do but uh but then at least i'm not frustrated from a business side to say well i haven't been paid adequately for the work that i agree done. it's yeah um, it's a it's a tough one isn't it yeah and, i mean you're meeting with your clients monthly so that's a big commitment of time yeah. So you can, have, I mean, I think you have to charge premium fee for that. Yeah. Because but you can only have so many clients as well, right? Exactly. So you have to be well rewarded for it. Yeah. 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 And they get, you know, obviously 
Well, we do. They get Ben Nash. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Yeah, they get Ben Nash. That's, that's a little way grand, isn't it, Crossy? Uh, but yeah, I think with the insurance, we get a lot of clients with the insurance. We probably come more from people that don't have any existing mm, insurance. They're young, yeah, uh, Gen Ys. So sometimes they forfeit, forfeit they're too, paying $2,000. But when I show it, we do a lot of level premiums. And, well, yeah, and you can see, right, like with and without comms, how thousands. much they're saving. Tens of thousands, yeah. yeah. So, um, mm. Cool. So, uh, hope you enjoy that, Sam. Good one, mate. Uh, look forward to catching up in the new year. So, we talked before about referrals and, and how you've grown your business mm. over time. How many clients have you got now? About 30. So, it's quite small. Uh -huh. So, I've sort of just been adding a couple of months, which okay. is very different to you, I think, because yes. you've been adding more than that. So, for me, I can't do much more than a couple of months. Yeah. A couple of months, that's enough for me. Don't get any time on the beach. Uh, yeah. Anytime. Yeah. No, I find that um, when I started my business, I wanted a business that worked for me rather than me working for mm. the business. So that's one of my motivating factors. Yeah. I've got three little kids. So I want to be able to spend time with my kids. Yeah. And if I take any more than two clients a month, it all gets out of kilter. Yeah. So I'm happy to slow burn it. Yeah. I think you need to, you need to know your limits. Yeah. Really. It's definitely my limit, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and where, so where are they coming from? Cause you mentioned, you told me about the hairdresser before. The yeah, that was, yeah, your top, our initial top meeting, top, top referrer. referrer. Uh, but you didn't tell me about the GP. So yeah. And so what else have you got in the, in the bag? <laughs> in the kit bag. <laughs> to be honest, a lot of my referrals now come from, I've got three people that are referring me clients consistently. Um, the conversion rate is lower on when I'm referred by lawyers and accountants. So I've got two lawyers and accountants that refer me a lot of clients. Uh -huh. Conversion rate is a lot lower than if my clients refer their friends. So if a client refers friends, they, yeah. they convert. Yeah. Um, so that they're my primary sources, really. I've got an accountant um, and two, I mean, I've got other referral partners, but the consistent yeah. is just three. Uh -huh. um, and then my clients. Okay. And how did the GP thing come about? When I first started my business, um, I'd been through a fair bit in my life and my GP said, so what are you going to do next? And I said, I'm going to start my own business. I told her what it was and she said, I know who your first client's going to be. I'm going to refer you a client. Right. Yeah. And so okay. she just referred me clients. Oh, what a legend. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. So outside yeah. of the box referral. What about you? Well, yours, you do your presentations we do workshops workshops yeah so we get about a third from workshops uh about a third from our clients and a third from just sort of random random yeah i know what you mean sort of places but no referral so when i say referral partners i'm not giving them anything to refer me work that i should make that clear I yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's just a mutual collaboration yeah that's right yeah uh, i'm the same like we don't mm. do any referral fees pay or receive mm. uh but no I, well, i've got one i got one client as a referral from a from an accountant, mm. I uh, I have an accountant that I ref that I was referring a lot of clients to. I've, I've since stopped because my clients aren't very desirable for mm. accountants because mm. they're they're just they're simple, right? Yeah, they really need a, an H and R block yeah. tax return, not a. Well, mm. yeah. Although accountants say that you shouldn't do that, mm. but uh, but I specialise more in PAYG because mm. I don't have at this stage, I haven't built the framework to, to adequately support business owners mm. because of the planning we do. It's mm. it's very planning focused, mm. which is much more difficult, especially if you're in startup phase with business, mm. which people in their thirties, they don't generally have the mature businesses mm. yet. So uh, makes it more difficult, but I've got a great mortgage broker that, mm. that he's actually an advisor. Um, we used to be licensed together mm. in, a, in a previous role and um, I refer him all my clients. He does great work. Mm. Uh, he doesn't refer clients back. But... It's the same for me. I've got a great mortgage broker. I refer, refer him. Yeah. Heaps of work. Don't get any back. Don't care. Because yeah. he's great. Yeah. yeah. As long as the, as long as your clients are getting looked after, I think that's the most important mm. thing. Obviously, it would be great if you if you were getting mm. referrals back, but you know, I think it, you can make your sort of make your own. And if you you want it, you're happy with the pace that, you, that your business is growing, yeah. you want to grow slow anyway. Um, I'm keen to do it, but I can generate leads mm. myself. And then it's like, you don't have to. Well, you how know, many of yours something. come through your social media? Cause you've got a big social media presence and well, do all this work in XY advisor. Yeah. XY, I haven't referred to <laughs> yeah, yeah, why I don't have, have a chat to the police about <laughs> yeah. this. Uh, but, but actually, they did return the client the other day. So, 
Uh, no, yeah, well, it's all sort of a pipeline. So it's hard mm. to say we do, the ultimate result is generally coming to one of our live workshop yeah. type things. Yeah. So people go through the pipeline. Mm. People do sort of contact from, from other areas and that's probably part of that 30, 30%. Mm. But I'd say, you know, close to 50% is sort of self-generated, mm. which, is, which is cool. It means it's more work to, mm. to do it because I have to take someone, it's not like they're getting an introduction from, a, mm. from another trusted advisor, like an mm. accountant or somebody that they know. Uh, so that's but I do I think, yeah, I do think it's hard for referral partners to, their funnel is really fat, right? Yeah. And so I think my referral partners are really referrers, yeah. but you know, you might get one client from 10 referrals and you've yeah. just spent 20 hours meeting people, That's it. right? Which is yeah. another reason why I'm thinking, okay, I need to charge for... Yeah, yeah. And it's really hard as mm. well, I think, when you, if you're working with a referral partner and their clients don't fit into your mould and then you feel like you need to sort of you need to do the right thing by your referral mm. partner. It's very generous of them to trust yeah. you and to, yeah, refer of work. Course. Like I've had it, like the last referral from another accountant, he didn't become a client and... It was a lovely couple. They were in their sort of late forties. There was a family trust. There was a business. They had a bunch of cash. Mm. It was a self-managed super fund. There's lots there of work. Heaps of heaps of stuff that you can do. But for me to do that work, it's going to take me so much longer than it would for you to do that mm. work because mm. that's what you're doing all the time. Mm. I'm going to get my head around everything. Mm. It's more complex. It doesn't fit in my my nice little mm. process that I mm. feel. Uh, so yeah. So you know, I don't know. Oh, you've got to stick no. in your niche. I, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know, it's the same reason that I refer retirees out to, same. you know, yeah, because I don't, oh, I don't know, like, yeah. how do I do an allocated pension and <laughs> what does that mean and yeah. what Centrelink benefits? I don't know. Like, yeah. that's too hard for me. I can't cope with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. you need specialists. You do. Yeah. yeah. Well, Catherine, we could chat all we day. We could. All day we could. Night. We've been trying to do it all year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But uh, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, Merry Christmas, XY crew. And yes. thanks to our mates at AIA for, uh, for supporting XY Life. We'll see you guys soon. See you later.